Hi Sodbusters, it's a beautiful day, the bees are flying, let's make some splits. So I previously did a split in the green hive, which was just an in-hive split. Taking that colony, splitting it in half, and moving one half to one end of the hive and one half to the other end. These are going to be more traditional. I'm going to be pulling out frames from the colonies that are in here, putting those frames into, right now, swarm traps. Then we'll let them build up inside of there and then move them to their permanent home later. Now, when I pull these out, these splits are going to be basically like a walkaway split. I could take part of the colony, leave it here, and part of the colony and put it into another box. All that needs to be certain is that each side has eggs that they can use to make a new queen. I don't have any queens in stock. I'm going to let the colonies requeen. Now, if you do have queens available, it is beneficial because the colony that doesn't have a queen can get started right away uh, with that queen laying eggs and building up the colony. In this case, the colony that doesn't have a queen is going to have to develop a new queen. And that's going to take 16 days to develop from egg to queen. And then about three days after that, she'll be going on her mating flight. So she won't be laying until about 20 days after the egg was first laid. So when we pull these eggs out, so we're looking at about 19, 20 days uh, before we can expect to see the new colony that comes out of these splits developing new brood, which is a little bit of time to wait, but it has worked well in the past. And based on the strength of these colonies, I like to continue the genetics of the queens that I have here. I don't have to find my queen. She could go either way. In this case, I actually kind of want the queen to go with the new colony. Part of the reasoning for taking the queen with the new colony is that it gives the colony the impression that they've already swarmed. So if they have any swarming inclination going on, now that existing queen is gone, it's as if she swarmed with the bees that were taken out, and the bees that are remaining will continue as if they were just left behind from the swarm. So there is some brood here. Not a lot on this frame. I'm not seeing any eggs in here. There's a little more nectar backfilling these cells. So not expecting to see my queen on this frame, but it's always possible. Boy, I got good brood on this side. I'm not yet seeing my queen. If I don't find her, we'll just do this blind. Make sure each side has a frame that has eggs. I'm just going to do a spot check here for any eggs. I do see some eggs on this frame. So we've got eggs here. I'm going to leave just a little gap here so I can try to remember that this frame has eggs. And yeah, I'm seeing eggs in this frame too. So we've got two frames here that have eggs in them. These are a little more defensive today than they had been. You can probably hear this little bee wants to be on mic telling us that she's not happy with us. Here's my queen. Okay, so she's working her way around here. I'm gonna set this frame down. Okay, where'd she go? She was right here, working her way up. There she is. Come on, Queenie. There she is. Oh. Got her there. Get her by her legs. Got her marked. Oops. And I'll let her crawl back. Uh, she wants to be my friend now. Back on the frame there. There you go. Okay. So like I said, I want... And we've got lots of eggs in this frame too. So this frame is definitely going along. We've got our queen in the box. This frame has a lot of mature brood. Oh, they're getting really defensive. 
did not sting me, but they're letting me know that they're not happy. Okay. So let's pull out. Oh, she stung me. Okay. We're going to have to get moving here. Smoke my arm here where that be tagged me. Looking for a frame that has some nectar and bee bread. Here we got that. Now we'll close things up here. So we got one frame with young brood and eggs, one frame that has mature brood. They both actually have eggs. Not that they needed in this one, but the frame that had the queen on it had the young brood. So they've got the queen. So I'm just gonna leave them with the bees that they have. We took out only three frames. We're leaving four frames over here. Well, I, I should say we took four frames that one wasn't built out. So three frames that were built out. So that'll leave us with three empty frames here. They're going to have a little bit of a brood break while they make a new queen. So they're going to lose some bees through that. This colony is going to lose their foragers. So kind of evens out. So throw some more on there. And one more frame. If I can fit it in here. I may need to clean off some of these frames. Yeah, that's not going to fit. It has been 11 days since I did the split in Hive 3 and I planned to check these at 10 days to see if they had closed queen cups but yesterday was really rainy so that was out of the question but I'm going to check today and check to see if the bees in this colony have made queen cups. The original queen went with the split into a smaller box uh, which is hanging right there but uh, so they're active looks like they're doing pretty good gonna let them just keep doing their thing for a while but we're gonna check now on the original hive and make sure that they are preparing to develop a new queen and if they're not then we'll have to take some action i am going to be suiting up today with my jacket because when a colony is queenless but has queen cells they tend to be more defensive now that was just my observation. I don't know if that is typical and I would love to hear from other beekeepers to see if you have seen the same thing. So leave a comment below and let me know if you've seen anything like that. But based on that experience and the fact that these bees were a little more defensive last time I opened the hive, I'm going to go ahead and put my jacket on today before we get in there. It is very windy today so that may also affect the bees temperament some. And we'll try to have the hive open no longer than necessary. All we need to do is go in and look and see if we can find queen cells. And they should be fairly easy to spot. I already have quite a few bees coming out to check me out. So we still have a good quantity of bees on there. And they're building comb down. Not seeing any queen cells, but they do have quite a bit of nectar and bee bread in there. Still have some cap brood on this frame. And here's what we're looking for. Right here, looks like a peanut hanging down right there. That's our queen cell. That's what we want to see. And they've got another right there. 
and it's typical that they would create more than one and let's check just for giggles to see if they have any more and they create multiple queen cells and what will happen is that the first queen to emerge from her cell will go around and do what's called piping which is making a little noise that sounds kind of like a cross between a chicken and a cricket. I see no more queen cells on this frame. Looks like they might have... Yeah, they got a cell there. Kind of bumped out a little bit. It's not as good looking cell as on the other frames, but it's there. So that's really all we need to see. That they've got that going on. So anyway, that uh, original queen, that first queen that emerges, will go around and pipe, and the other queens that are still in their cells will pipe in response, which is their mistake, because that first one to emerge will then go around and she will sting those other queens through the cell and kill them. And once she has killed off her rivals and had enough time for her wings to mature that she can go for a flight, which will take about three days after she emerges, then she will go out on her mating flight. And the emergence of the first queen should be in about four or five days from today, depending on the age of the eggs that these bees chose. To make their queens from. So then about three days after that, so about a week from today, that first queen should be mature enough that she can go on her mating flight and she will fly to what's called a drone congregation area. And which, as it sounds, is kind of where the drones congregate. Where the drones are hanging out, kind of in a little cloud. And uh, so the queen will go there. She will mate with anywhere from a dozen to three or four dozen males, male, uh, the drone bees. And she may do this in one flight, or she may do it over a couple flights, maybe two or three days. But once that queen has mated, that is her one mating flight for her life. She will not mate again for the rest of her life, which could be up to five years. So I think that's kind of fascinating. Hope you enjoy hearing about it too. But it looks like this hive is in pretty good shape right now. They've got their queen cells. Um, we'll probably check back in about two weeks and look for signs of a laying queen. Uh, nothing more for us to do right now. Happy that they have uh, been able to make those queen cells. And now we'll just hope that they're successful in uh, that new queen getting mated. If you've enjoyed this video, then I'd really appreciate if you would give it a thumbs up. And if you would like to see other content like this, then please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. This box is the split that was taken from Taj Mahal Hive 3. It contains the original queen from that hive. And these bees are going to a new home tomorrow. So I haven't opened this since I did the split, so I want to open this up check to make sure that everything looks good before I take these to their new keeper. So I got five frames in here. The box was made to fit exactly six, but that's before the frames had propolis on them. Since I'm using some existing frames with the propolis on the edges, I couldn't quite fit six in here. So I'm gonna have to make a couple spacers to put in here or maybe just screw the frames in place so that they will ride okay for the trip. I put in a feeder here because these bees lost their foragers. I wanted to uh, give them some food to get them started in their new box here. All right, so they haven't really built out much on that frame yet. It hasn't been that long since the split. Got some nectar and pollen stored up in there. 
and about the same on the other side not as much stored up all right now we've got decent brood at the top and about the same brood on the opposite side I do see larvae in there, I see eggs in there, so they've got all stages of brood in there. Pretty much all worker brood, even though some of these lower cells are, appear to be sized for drones. Okay, we got more brood on there, about the same amount as on that last frame. Got a drone on there. And about the same amount of brood on this side. Maybe a little more. I would expect my queen to be either on this frame or that last one. Oh, there she is. See her bopping around right there. Little white dot on her. Drip the little nectar out of there. Sorry, ladies. And we'll just, for good measure, take a glance at this last frame. All right, it's just an empty frame. Got some bees, you can probably see the shadows on there. There's bees on the other side. So, so we're in pretty good shape on these. Got uh, drone in all stages. We got some nectar built up in there. And uh, I need to make myself a couple spacers here for the ride otherwise we are good to go so happy about how they're doing in here hope they do even better in their new home now we're going to see if the bees that were left in here have successfully made themselves queens i had checked before and they did have queen cells so that was fine now we're two weeks plus a few days past that and going to check and see if those queens have successfully mated and are laying brood. Now as I watch the entrances of these hives, I have noticed that hive three, which is the one closest to the camera, has seemed to be a little less active. And maybe there's not much that can be read into that, but just an observation. And kind of going along with that observation, I'm seeing not a whole lot of bees on these first frames. Just empty foundation on that first one and pretty much empty foundation on the second. Now, if we do not have a mated queen in here, then one thing I could do, and I may give them a few more days to prove it. Sometimes it just takes a queen a little while to start laying. One more thing that I could do is pull another frame, a frame of brood from another hive and put it in here. And what I'd be likely to do is go back to my mother colony and pull a frame out of there. The uh, mother colony has not been split this year and they haven't been growing real aggressively. I'm thinking just because, probably because it's an older queen, but she's been doing all right. So I should be able to get some good brood out of that hive and what I like about that is so far the queens I've gotten from that colony have been really good. So looking at this, we've just got some nectar in there, some pollen. Okay. Now these bees are a little louder. Could potentially be because I've opened the hive now, but a queenless colony is often louder, almost more like a roar, whereas a queen right colony will tend to be calmer and quieter. Not seeing any brood yet. I'm seeing some nectar in here and some bee bread, but no brood to speak of. And there can be a lot of reasons why a queen might not have been able to successfully mate. One of the most obvious being that something ate her 
caught her and ate her on her way to be mated. She has to leave the hive, fly to what's called a drone congregation area, where she mates with drones from other colonies. And they've just got some bee bread in here and some nectar and like one drone cell there. I'm guessing that's a failed cell because unless I am starting to have a laying worker, but I'm seeing no evidence of a mated queen in here. And this one last frame, they've kind of built out a little bit, but probably not much more to see on here, but some nectar maybe, a little pollen. Kind of pretty comb, nice and bright yellow comb. And that yellow comes from the bees tracking pollen over it. When they first build it, it's pure white so and not really anything to speak of on this side so I think we got a failed queen over here what I mean is that we the hive failed to successfully requeen possibly lost the virgin queen somewhere along the line when she went on her mating flight or something else happened to her so I think what I will do is go ahead and I'll check in the mother colony, see if I can find a good frame of brood to pull out of there. We'll give them a new frame of brood and let them take another go at it. Now, if they have a mated queen and I just did not see her, I don't think having that frame of brood is going to hurt anything, but better to give them a start. So I'll close these up for now but I'll come back and give them a frame of brood and give them another try at raising their own queen. It is Wednesday, May 11th, and it is hot. About 95 degrees at the last check, which is uh, above the average for today. So we're getting a little early taste of summer right now. But it's 10 days after I last put a frame of brood in Hive 3 in Taj Mahive. They appear to have failed to create a queen on the first go around. So I added another frame of brood from the mother colony. So now 10 days after adding that frame, they should have queen cells. So we're gonna open up the hive and see uh, what the status is on that. Hopefully the bees won't be as hot as the temps out here, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Well, this last frame is a frame of foundation. Looks like they're kind of starting to build out on it. Got a little bit of comb built out on this side and they're storing up some nectar. So they're storing up pretty well. Hopefully they'll be making themselves a queen. So this frame, they're storing up nectar in there. And of course you wouldn't expect to see any brood. Now they have quite a bit of pollen up through here too, but they haven't had a queen for a while. So uh, I'm not expecting at all to see any brood in here. Now here's our brood frame that we added. I do see one cell bumped out on it that could be a queen cell. Well, they still got some cat brood on there, which when I found this, it was a really good frame for making a queen because it had a lot of eggs and young brood on it. But not seeing any queen cells on this side and seeing just one little bumped out cell on the other side. So we got a little cell over here that's bumped out. It really looks more like a, a drone cell than a queen cell. So I'm not real happy about that. Well, they do have, you know what, it's possible. Maybe I missed something on the last inspection because they've got another frame of brood over here. So maybe they're not making a queen cell because they already had a queen. That would be nice. This was the one hive from my splits that I did not see a queen or evidence of a queen in, but sometimes it takes a new queen a little while to start laying.
Uh, they got a lot of nectar in the middle. Then there is larva in here. Apparently I do have a laying queen in here and didn't even realize it. Or at least she wasn't a laying queen last time I checked, but she is now. So that's really good news. And so they didn't even really need that extra frame of brood, but it didn't hurt them at all. But yeah, they got larvae in there. Let's see if I can spot any eggs in here. My sun's kind of gone behind a cloud, so I don't have real good light to see down in the cells. But I see various sizes of larvae. It looks like we're in pretty good shape there. Did not see the queen there. We'll pull this other frame. Maybe she's over here. On this frame, they've got a lot of pollen stored up in there. A lot of nectar and a little bit of brood right in the middle. Not seeing my queen, but that's okay. We've got good news anyway. This is very good news about the fact that we have the queen here because I was, uh, I had all sorts of contingent plans to combine this hive with another one if they hadn't started making a queen. And my apiary isn't hurting right now, but hate to lose a colony. Well, I'm sure not seeing her, but she is surely there. In this frame, I mentioned there's some nectar in the middle, and there is, but there's also a lot of little tiny larvae in there, so that's great. That queen might actually be on this next frame, which was the second one I pulled out. I wasn't even looking for her because I had absolutely no ex expectation that there was a queen in here. Let's see. We've got empty cells here. Well, yeah, not spotting her. All right, well, I don't have to find her today. We'll just close them up and let them be about their business. And because they're building out this last frame, I'll throw another frame in here. I'm gonna have to make some more frames. Our linden tree out front is going to be blooming soon, so we'll get them some frames. They can use that nectar to either build out wax or store up honey. But otherwise, they're looking good. Much better than I expected. And I'm very happy. So that was a really good inspection. Pleasantly surprised at what I found, that the fact that there is a laying queen in there. If they hadn't made a queen by now, like I said before, I'd just combine them. So I was afraid they were about out of business, but we're looking really good. And now we'll just let them build back up and get to work for the rest of the summer. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate if you'd give it a like. And I have several other videos about my beehives and about my garden. And if you like that stuff, then please go ahead and give this channel a subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell. You also might want to check out this video that Google has selected, especially for you, or check out my beekeeping playlist. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you next time.